Thank you very much, Jill. Um, ladies and gentlemen, in the UK, I think medical leadership has evolved as an amateur sport. Uh, it needs to be a professional one. Robert Francis said so in his report, FMLM believes so and our patients need it to be so. We need to take medical leadership to where the colleges have taken clinical medicine, uh, except we don't have centuries uh, to do it in. These are very interesting times, as Jill alluded to uh, in her opening comments. Bette Davis said, old age ain't no place for sissies. Um, I would argue that medical leadership at this time in our history ain't no place for sissies either. Your council has agreed that professionalizing medical leadership is an urgent and key responsibility for the faculty uh, and it's a key focus for this conference. With all the challenges that you live on a daily basis, and I won't go through because you know them uh, every bit as well as I do, we need evidence uh, to know that we're doing the right things around leadership rather than just uh, making stuff up as we go along. Michael West will talk about that in his address. He will talk about the joint work that we're doing with him and the King's Fund and the Center for Creative Leadership uh, around leadership and linking the evidence base to clinical outcome. We need to address the challenges for medical leadership, which we should have addressed long ago. And Chris Ham's excellent report uh, recently, Chris will build on that report, which I think, uh, to summarize it, damns medical leadership with faint praise, although Chris was far too polite uh, to, to, to say that. And we also need to learn from other sectors, and I'm delighted that Richard Heron, who's one of our founding council members, will bring to us his experience uh, from BP. And also, we need the next generation of clinical leaders with fresh minds and great energy, and who better than Nikki Kanani, who amongst many other things is a newly qualified GP and is the QI lead for their FMLM uh, to, to kick off the conference. The workshops at the last count, I think there's something in the order of 45 to 50 different themes which will be discussed tomorrow, are your opportunity to shape the future, your opportunity to put your input in. And this is one of those conferences where I think we want to take away from it more than you do uh, if you get uh, my drift. In short, I hope you agree with me that the time for a faculty of medical leadership and management is absolutely here. And thank you uh, very much for your support. Thank you for those of you who've joined the faculty because it's pretty obvious that without you, uh, there is no organization. And the numbers have crept up a bit since Jill's figure of 650, and we're now well over 700 people at this conference. And of course, we had over 700 people at our first conference last year, which is just staggering from, uh, from sitting where I am. And thank you also for those of you that are getting involved and getting your hands dirty with the faculty, because without you, to be quite frank, we can't move at the pace we need to. And thanks to the regional leads who've done so much already. Uh, they're an integral part, as you will know, of our, of our governance structure. There is no way that a centrally driven organization can move this agenda forward at the pace and scale it requires. Um, we, need, uh, we need much more involvement than, than can be delivered from a central office. Uh, and the regions, I think, are the, absolutely the way of doing that. And thank you to the trainees and the medical students and to your steering groups. Not only do you give us a strong sense of optimism for the future, uh, but you're, uh, you are an immeasurable resource uh, to keep us pushing at the boundaries uh, and where we need to go. Circumstances uh, do not give us the privilege of a slow evolution, and I think that we are moving at significant pace. We implemented the new governance structure this summer, and that will be covered at the AGM this afternoon at 5 o'clock. Thank you to our founding council members who've now given over to the six college representatives who sit on our, uh, on our, our council. Um, and uh, the support and the ownership of the colleges is incredibly important to our future. Thank you for the new council, which has, as I say, six college representatives and, and eight regional leads, as well as uh, the college officers and uh, one person who's been co-opted onto the council. And a huge uh, personal thank you from me to our chairman, Sunil Douglas, um, who is, a, I could not ask for a better chair, is a huge personal support to me. But I hope you've also had the opportunity to read the interview with Neil uh, in E! News this last month, where you will see just how incredibly influential he was in the, in the setting up 
uh, of the faculty uh, two to three years ago. Sustainability, as Jill alluded to in the new organization, is never far from our thoughts. We've grown faster than any of us imagined. And that poses challenges, again, as Jill mentioned, to a small office. We have excellent financial management now with the recruitment of Gosher in our team and also with the excellent leadership of our treasurer, David Tolley. So thank you to both of them. But the, the best financial governance in the world is not wealth creating. And we need to be constantly thinking of ways in which we can raise uh, income and support, largely to accelerate progress rather than just to survive. We've kept subscriptions, I hope you will agree, incredibly low. Just to give you some idea, one of uh, the colleges to which I belong, my subscription for that is two and a half times what the faculty charges, and it's gone up by 9% uh, in this last year. And uh, just while we're talking money, uh, which I will move on in just a second, but a huge thanks to the NHS Leadership Academy, to Professor Sir Bruce Keogh, to the Academy of Medical Royal Colleges, and a number of organizations involved in revalidation who've been incredibly supportive to us over this last 12 months. In addition to all that, we are acutely conscious of our need to serve the membership, and I hope you will agree that the membership offer continues to grow. I vividly remember, it must be 15, 20 years ago now, as a brand new medical director turning around and reaching for the manual on the shelf to tell me what to do, only to discover that there was none, uh, nor was there any manual for any of the other jobs I subsequently did. We have to change that. And I hope that uh, you will agree that some of the resources that we've started to develop do that. Please have a look at our stand. Please look at what we've produced to date. And if you've got ideas of building on those themes uh, where you would like to contribute, then please do so. But if you think there are things that we're missing that you'd like to also contribute to, then please do that too. And the final bit in, 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 this, uh, in, in this part is that we've now invested significantly in a new website. We had a lot of plaudits for the old website, uh, but actually it was getting a bit tired. And I have to say, at my advancing age, trying to read those sort of size eight font banners across the top was getting increasingly difficult, and that will be launched soon. Jill touched on a lot of the things going on in the background. I'm just going to read a list uh, very quickly now, but there are a whole er series of areas that we're working on. We're working on the standards of medical leadership, diversity, on primary care, coaching and mentoring, quality improvement, talent management, succession planning, careers advice, online communications and webinars, uh, and there's a huge amount of work going on around revalidation, and as you will know, we became a designated body this year, and there are many more, and if I've forgotten the bit that you're involved in, I apologize unreservedly. The Workstream events tomorrow and the networking events uh, today and tomorrow are a great way for you to get stuck into some of those, uh, those topics and help us move those forward. As you will appreciate, all the activities I've outlined take a considerable amount of time and effort. Um, and I would just like to take this opportunity to thank uh, my colleagues in the, in the faculty team. They are an amazingly hardworking, deeply committed uh, group of people and actually great fun to, to work with. I'm really nervous of singling anybody out uh, in, in a team for obvious reasons, but Carla's efforts around putting on this conference have been absolutely superb. Um, and, uh, but Carla would be the first to acknowledge that she's done that with the unstinting support of all her colleagues, which has been freely given. Um, mention of the conference, thank you very much indeed to, to Dodds, the events managers, and also I think Jill talked about the exhibitors at the beginning. Without the exhibitors, you don't get a free conference. Uh, so please do them the respect of visiting their, their stands as much as you humanly can over the next couple of days. The, many of you will have been at the Education Day yesterday, which again was oversubscribed, um, and the feedback I've had was great, but we'll analyze that later. But a huge thanks to Robin Cordell and Padre Morda, who put the lion's share of the organizing of that uh, with Carla. And, and finally, no mention of the team is complete without uh, a mention of Kirsten. Last year, I described her as the most outstanding manager and colleague you could ever hope to work with. I'm pleased to tell you she still is. In handing over to Nikki, uh, I believe we're living one of the most important values of FMLM, and that is an investment in the next generation. 
it is with enormous pride that we run the National Medical Directors Clinical Fellowship Scheme, and I feel a massive privilege to work so closely with so many staggeringly gifted people. If you're worried about leadership for the future, look no further than that group of people. They are uh, seriously uh, amazing. And thank you guys for all the help uh, and, and effort you're putting into making the conference a success. But this year, I'm also delighted to say that uh, we have four Welsh clinical fellows that have, uh, have joined in a, in a scheme which was run by uh, and sponsored by the Chief Medical Officer in Wales, and they joined the English fellows on the induction programme. And is Di here? He, one of them broke his leg last night, so uh, um, I'm, I won't ask how much he'd had to drink before he did that, but, but, but hey, it is Scotland. Um, and also, I'm really delighted to say that Scotland is developing a scheme and there are going to be two uh, clinical fellows in Scotland this year. And the opportunity, if you start to think about, about starting to mix the uh, trainee communities, communities across the four nations is, is brilliant. In England, we opened up a northern scheme this year because we were acutely conscious that it was heavily biased towards London uh, trainees, and I'm delighted to say we have nine northern fellows, and we hope to see the whole scheme expand for next year. So, in drawing to a conclusion, um, I want to return to my opening remarks on the urgency uh, and the need to enhance professional medical leadership. Um, FMLM is only two years old, but we're already the second largest medical leadership organization in the world. We have to stop seeing ourselves as a fledgling organization, and that I think I might be talking more to me and to my psyche than to you uh, in that remark. And what we've got to do is to punch way above our weight. We cannot achieve the work through a small team in an attic in London. It needs all of you to be engaged, as I've said so many times. So I'm asking a couple of things of you. Uh, to, to ponder on and take away at conference. Firstly, support your regional networks this afternoon. That's your opportunity to shape what the regions do, to shape the opportunities that are available to you at a much more local level than having to disappear off to capital cities. Um, and through the regional groups, obviously, and the huge representation on our council, that will shape the national agenda for the faculty. Secondly, join the work streams tomorrow. As I said, I want to get more out of you than we want to put in on this conference. So please help us shape our thinking uh, around that and help us to address some of the challenges we have in reaching our goals. Beyond the conference, I would ask you all to go away and recruit two more members. And for medical directors and clinical directors in the room, I'd like you to go and recruit three more members. We still have more medical student members than we have medical directors which on the one hand is massively uh, uh, encouraging, on the other hand, it's deeply disappointing. Um, so if you do that, then actually that covers 20% of our operating costs. Um, so I'll leave you to ponder on that one. <laughs> get involved in your uh, regional groups, get your hands dirty and don't wait to be asked. And if anybody's sitting with a spare million or two burning a hole in their pocket, we will very happily help you, uh, help you to spend that. So my concluding comment, uh, Don Berwick, uh, in his letter to the public, and I accept this was, uh, was a letter to England, but I think the, the, what, what binds us all, the underpinning uh, of the NHS, is every bit as relevant. It's quite interesting. The, remember, we used to have a letter to America. It's quite interesting now for a letter from America to, 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 uh, to the UK. But Don Berwick said, what you have in the NHS is something that most other nations in the world don't have a unified system of care that is completely capable of identifying its problems, admitting them, and acting to correct them. That is the process now underway, and that is the process that can, and I believe will help the NHS to emerge over time as one of the safest healthcare systems in the world. I see FMLM playing a huge role in this aspiration, and 2,000 leaders from medical student to chief medical officer is a pretty impressive army. I would ask you to reflect a moment. How many more times in your career will you have the opportunity to shape something so new and so important to the integrity of our healthcare system? I urge you not to be passive recipients of membership of the faculty, but active participants in building an organization which will be a force for excellence for generations uh, to come. And finally, I just say, don't do it for me. Don't do it for FMLM but do it for the benefit of patients of this generation and generations to come. Thank you very much.